Welcome back to Big Red Wrap-Up. We are joined by the 31st head football coach at the University of Nebraska, Matt Rule. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. Thank you. You've been through this a lot, and as we're taping this, you're about 10 days away from the game. Has camp gone like you thought it would? Had you planned? How has it been? It's been great. Um, it's probably gone better than I thought, you know, everything from moving into the dorms mm -hmm. to some of the activities. We've had a lot of fun, and, um, you know, it's been good for me, like, to see we've been really physical, practiced really hard, yet we're coming out really healthy. And so it's, uh, it shows that they did a great job in the summer with Corey and the strength staff. How's that balance been? Because you started long enough ago where you could hit every day almost. How's that been working around the, the NCAA rules? It's tough. Uh, they've changed them since I was last year. You know, you can only be in full pads eight times before the first game. I don't believe in it. I think it's wrong. I yeah. think uh, I don't think you have a chance to really callous your body. Um, but, you know, they let you have helmets and shoulder pads. And our guys do a great job of being physical while still staying off the ground. And so... Um, I've been pleased with our guys. They, they, they really believe in practice. They believe in, you know, our, our message is simple. You know, you're trying to master your craft. The, the only way to do that is to practice. And, and so they've, take, they've really taken to it. And as a result, because everyone's going at the same speed, we've come out pretty healthy. Obviously, the close losses over the last few years is something people talk about a lot. Is there a secret sauce that you've discovered over your years for winning those one-score games? You know, I think, I think you have first have to learn how to win. I think really at first you have to learn how not to lose. Mm eliminate losing football then you start playing good football and you learn how to win and then eventually there's a third stage of like playing championship football and um you know those games come down to you know two minute drive or a last play or a great sack to end the game and so you know we're we're learning how to eliminate losing football and how to play really good football and i believe it comes down it's everything it's it's the way we travel it's being on time to study hall it's it's being hydrated all, all the little things that don't seem important actually really are and so the, the guys have bought into them even when they haven't understood it they've bought into it and I see us making huge strides so I hope it happens this year I hope this is the year that we have a lead and finish the game I mm -hmm. hope this is the year that maybe we're behind and come back and win um, but it, it'll definitely happen you are a no stone unturned kind of guy you it, I can tell how even when you were talking about the practice field and saying you know you wait a few days for it to settle is that based on your years of coaching or coaches you had that you worked for that you are so into the details? Uh, you know, Dr. Susan Elza, who's our chief of staff, she told me that one day she said, you're the most particular guy I've ever met in my life. I yeah. said, I don't know if that's a compliment. Um, but I think, you know, if we say we're going to do something a certain way, we should probably just do it that way. And, um, you know, I want to be intentional. I want our staff to be intentional. So we think about everything. We don't want to just, you know, just fly by the seat of our pants. Sure. So uh, I think I learned a lot of that from Joe Paterno. I mean, coach was very much that way. Like he would stand up in front of us and, re you know, was, the year was whatever it was. I can't remember how old am I? 1995, 1994, 1996. And he'd be reading off practice schedules from like 1982. Right. You know, the, hey, so we did six minutes of this, five. But he was so intentional about everything we did. You re recognize that there was a purpose to it. I worked for Tom Coughlin, who was as particular and, you know, strict and, I saw from both those men, we're both Hall of Famers, say something, plan it out, and then do it, and be unwavering. And so I'm, I'm trying to do the same thing as best I can. You were only in, on the job for about a month when you went out and got Jeff Sims out of the portal. What was it about him that you saw on tape at Georgia Tech and or talking to him? What did you, what did you see in him? Well, you know, I've watched Jeff for several years. You know, the, the head coach at Georgia Tech was a great friend of mine. Uh, so I watched a lot of games, and I think he has elite potential. Uh, he's got a ton of talent. And I like who he is as a person. You know, when you know Jeff was fired, you know, the head coach of Georgia Tech was fired about the same time I was out, and so we talked a lot. And mm -hmm. uh, he really believed in Jeff. Getting to know Jeff and talk to him, you could see the personality, you could see the traits, you could see all the things that are going to make him a great leader. And um, you know, we were lucky that he chose us. He had a lot of options, but he chose to come to the University of Nebraska, and um, I'm grateful that he did. I think he's going to be a really good player for us. Out of all the things that are coming out of this camp wide receiver injuries and, and obviously losing a body as well. How is that coming about? And is there a number that you want to have where you can say, I got five guys I can count on or six guys I can count on? Well, um, I've always wanted to have five, five receivers, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that can all go in the game, you know, without, without a drop off. And, um, you know, obviously losing Xavier was difficult. It was tough, you know, A for us and then B for him. Uh, losing Marcus Washington early with an injury, you know, but he's played a lot of football. Whenever he gets back, um, I'm not too worried about Marcus, you know, getting his legs back underneath him. You know, he's, he's played a lot of football. He had a really good summer, had a really good camp till he got hurt in a couple days. He did practice. He'll, he'll, he's a vet. He'll be back. 
if we can get to five guys, then great. You know, and I think you know what we do have is we have a bunch of freshmen that are really talented. And um, I'm not afraid to play freshmen. In the recruiting process, mm -hmm. I tell them all, you're going to get a chance to play. So, you know, we're, we're working overtime to get them ready to go. But I, I like that room. We've got competitors. We have tough guys. We have guys who can get open. Um, we'll just bring the freshmen along with them. Yeah, you mentioned freshmen, and you also mentioned that you need veterans to win in the Big Ten. Is there a position that you feel more comfortable playing a freshman? Uh, that, that's a great question. I, um, you know, I think it, it, it really comes down to each individual person, you know. I, you know, I started a freshman quarterback at Temple my yeah. first year. I started a freshman quarterback at Baylor. Um, after about game four, I put both those guys in, and they started every game for me till I left. So, um, yeah, that's a really good question. I, I think I think probably um, I, I don't really want to play a ton of freshman offensive line. Sure. Here. Um, you know, in the back end, you know, the, the, the athletic positions, the running positions. When you're a freshman, your body might not be as built up, but at receiver, at running back, at, at DB, uh, if you can run, you can run. And so. Uh, we were fortunate, though, uh, that a lot of guys came mid-year. So like Cam Lenhard, Prince mm -hmm. Will, those guys are all going to play. They're ready to play. They they did our match drills. They did our offseason. The, they're almost like sophomores, even though they're actually only freshmen. We think as football fans, we know what's happening on an offensive line, and I know we don't. Um, tell me what you saw from these guys, or a lot of them returning, that you say this offensive line will be better, or it'll be it'll be good. It'll serve it like you want it to be. Yeah, I think I think our offensive line is going to play well. I mean, they, they they function as a group. They work as a group. Um, you know, we have a commitment. The way the way that you know we try to run the program is, we do a lot of good on good, ones on ones. And um, the thought process of that is, when you get to the game, you know, if you've had to pass protect against Ty Robinson all week, if you've yeah. had to, you know, zone block uh, uh, Nash Hutchmacher all week, you hope that when you get to the game, you're prepared. You know, like you know, you're hoping that our guys on defense are better than the guys you're playing against or, or at the same level. So. I like where our group's at. They're tough. They're physical. Um, you know, we took the knee braces off them. We, we ch kind of changed a little bit of, in terms of the way that we train them. Donnie's in year two with them. Mm -hmm. I think Donnie's as good an online coach as I've ever been around. So uh, I'm excited for the guys. And then the system that Sat has, we don't want to be flashy. You know, Marcus isn't trying to set any records, you know, for yardage. Mm -hmm. We, we, we want to win games. And so we'll play to their strengths. And, and, and I think as the year goes on, we'll adapt a little bit when we play some games, see what we're really good at, and then and stick with it. Do you have a philosophy in terms of rotating at all in the offensive line? Like, do you pick five guys and they go the whole game, or do you try to bring younger guys in and work them in? Yeah, you know, um, when we have, we love to have seven guys that can go in the game. And if we can, if we can play all seven, that's great. You know, it gives you, gives guys a chance, you know, especially early in the year to, to get their feet underneath them, you know, lets you play guys that are fresh. And also at the same time, when a guy gets banged up in the middle of the year, which usually happens, you know, someone's not going in, you know, at crunch time for the first time. So we'd love to play uh, seven guys, uh, but they all have to be above the line. They've all got to be good enough. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I think we have six or seven, eight guys that we feel good about going into the game and playing. Um, so we're right there. So I, I think you could see us rotate some. Uh, a lot will happen in the next 10 days that will make some of those decisions easier to make. I have a real appreciation for the 335 because I was working in New Mexico. Rocky Long was there. Bronco Mendenhall was there. We got a chance to go watch practice. The concern fans have, though, is the Big Ten, big offensive linemen. They're going to try to run the ball on your throat. How do you deal with that in the 335? You know, we were last in the league and run, run defense last year, playing a different defense. I, right, right. I don't think it's really the scheme. I think it's how you do things. I, I'll always believe that, mm -hmm. right? Like, we were, we were, a, you know, we were a top 25 defense at, at Temple three out of the four years, and we played a 4-3. Four, four, we went to Baylor. Uh, we switched to a three-down front like this. Uh, we were, you know, we were one of the top defenses in the nation our yeah. last year. Went to the NFL. We went to a more of a five-down approach. I, I don't think it's as much to me about what we do. It's how we do it. You know, can we get off blocks? Can we tackle? Do we run to the ball? Do we affect the quarterback? Do we punch the ball out? Um, I love the versatility of Tony's scheme. It's, it's fun. It's aggressive. It's, it's, it's difficult to block. You know, I'm, I'm not an offensive head coach. I'm not a defensive head coach. I'm kind of right there in the middle. And seeing it from an offensive perspective, how hard it is to deal with, I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty good. Um, yeah, teams are going to line up. They're going to try to bully us. They're going to try to knock us off the ball. And I say that sincerely about what happened last year. We can't be at the University of Nebraska and be last in the Big Ten in terms of rush defense. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've got to be up near the top. And I, I don't care. Whatever we have to do to do that, you know, we'll do. Yeah, in, in terms of you meant getting after the passer, how does a 3-3-5 help you with that? Because you notice that there's five guys at the line of scrimmage. Any of them could be coming at any time. How, how does that help you in getting the passer? Yeah, I think when you go to an odd front, when you're in three down or you're in four down, um, 
the offense has to really be on the same page. You know, you basically have three known rushers, and now you're trying to identify, hey, who's the fourth, who's the fifth. When you when you're a four down team, which I've been many years, you know, hey, here's the four guys we got to block these four. So uh, through disguise, through multiple looks, you know, we're trying to create mismatches. We're trying to create confusion. Um, we're always hoping that maybe we can they'll turn a guy loose, or we can get one of our best rushers on the running back or on the worst offensive lineman. So to me, it's kind of a chess match. And uh, the great thing is, is Tony's not inventing this defense for the first time. He's been calling it. He's right. been running it. He knows how to adjust it. And I, I've had a lot of fun watching him do that so far. I'm mostly intrigued by finishing drive rate. It's my favorite analytic. It really tells you who's going to win games, and it's based on red zone offense, right? Can you kind of give us a philosophy on, on coaching red zone offense? Yeah, you know, we, we, we want to score a touchdown about 70% of the time that we're in the red zone. It's really hard to do. You know, we don't pay attention to red zone scoring percentage. For us, it's all about red zone touchdowns. We don't, you know, we think on defense, a, a field goal is a takeaway. It's a turnover. If they kick a field goal, we don't pay attention to it. Mm. On offense, we'll take field goals, but we're not super excited about them until the fourth quarter when it matters. So, um, you know, I think every game's a little different. Some games you're trying to collect points on offense. Some games you're going for it on fourth down. You have to kind of take each game based upon what you think the outcome is going to be a little bit differently. But, uh, you know, we want to be able to run the ball in, in, in the red zone. It's one thing to run the ball up the field. That's great. But you have to be able to run the ball when it counts down in the red zone. Uh, you have to have red zone threats, guys that you can create one-on-ones with who can win. And uh, I think the quarterback running the ball in the red zone is a, a really key factor. It's, it's one thing to run them up the field. That's great. Yeah. But you get down there, uh, points matter, and running the quarterback can really help you. I have two sons. I don't know if I could leave one behind, even with our grandparents. How are you dealing with first being away from your family and now having your son you finish his senior year away from you? Yeah, thank you for asking me that. Um, uh, my, my wife and daughters got here last Monday. Yeah. And uh, uh, I have a tradition every year, whenever my daughters show up from camp, that's I, I give everyone off the rest of the day. <laughs> and so the guys are pretty fired up. But uh, we moved into our house and um, really happy to have them here. You know, that balance. Uh, uh, that, you know, I, I love them, obviously. And so having them here is, is, is great after a long time apart. Yeah. And then, yeah, you know, have, Bryant was here for two weeks. He was in the dorms. He was one of those guys pranking the coaches and <laughs> yeah. all things. I mean, it was, it was really cool. I'm really grateful to our players, the way they kind of took him in as one of their own. It's, it's what makes this group special. So I hate that he won't be around. You know, I hate that he won't be at the first game. Yeah. Um, I haven't, he hasn't missed a lot of games over the years, but I'm proud of him. As I told him, you know, you're a man now, you know, go, Go do your own laundry. Go, <laughs> go, uh, go, go, go. Learn what it takes to to live on your own. And um, you know, Julie and I just have to trust that we did the right things over the last years. And yeah. uh, I hate that I'm not with him, but uh, I appreciate and I love him for the fact that he let me come do this. I'll give you a couple of rap rapid fire questions. Uh, Runza or chili and cinnamon rolls? If you had to pick just one. Oof. Gosh. Chili and cinnamon rolls. Sorry, Runza. That's okay. Uh, T bone, ribeye, New York strip, or a different cut. Does it matter? New York Strip every New time. New York Strip, really? Yeah, controversial, but yes, yeah. true. Well, it's an Italian one, right? I mean, yeah. we have a lot of Italian steakhouses <laughs> in Omaha for that. And then you only have two choices, rare or medium rare. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, I'll say this, probably rare, but I, I always say as the, as the chef decides. I love when if the chef thinks oh, it should okay. be medium rare. I love to let, the, I believe chefs are artists, yes. so I let them do their thing. Yeah. We saw you go to SmackDown and you did the Kenny Chesney concerts. Which one, if you had to choose between one, going to big wrestling or going Oof. to Kenny Chesney? I loved them both, but I'd, I'd go with Kenny Chesney. I thought he, no one performs like he performs. Yeah. This one is important to me as I grew up a Penn State fan. So, 86 or 94, better team? Wow. That's <laughs> a great question. Ah, oh, man. Eight, 86, obviously, was my favorite team because I was young that and a defense. diehard Penn State, Shane Collin, you know, yeah. Giftopolis, Trey yeah. Bauer. Yep. But uh, yeah, I'd say 86. Yeah, it's it's. I always look back. We have an argument here at ninety four because of Nebraska, oh, yeah, no Penn doubt. State. So yeah, that's that's my favorite team as well. Coach, we appreciate. Hey, thank you. Good luck this season. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. We'll be back with more Big Red wrap up.